Hey guys, welcome to our video on top fish for desktop aquariums. Now, Eric and I have selected our top five picks. It's kind of a, subject, a subjective thing, so it's always interesting to see what uh, each other's picks are. And for that reason, we've established some criteria, so there'll be some commonality between our picks. Mm -hmm. Eric's gonna take us through those criteria. Right, so for a desktop aquarium, first of all, you want fish that are, um, that are okay in smaller aquariums, about 15 gallons uh, in volume or less. Um, you also want fish that are peaceful because these are, these are smaller aquariums. Uh, you want fish that will get along with each other very well. Uh, and lastly, because it's a smaller aquarium and you're not keeping many fish, uh, you want the fish that you select to have some kind of distinguishing characteristic or feature or color or behavior uh, so that they really stand out, they can be the centerpiece of a smaller aquarium. Uh, so Tom, why don't you give us uh, your number five pick? Absolutely, Eric. Uh, now I've started with the guppy, the Pocilia recticulata. It is a hobby founding fish. It's a small fish, it's very peaceful, it's constantly moving, it's active. And one of the things I really like about the guppy is all the different varieties in terms of body sizes, color patterns, fin shapes. There's just an endless variety of stuff out there that will suit one setup perhaps more than another, making it interesting and giving you the variety to choose from. And on top of that, for those of you that wanna get into breeding, well, there isn't a better fish for that because you can experiment in fixing a strain, establishing your own strain. I've always found it a very fascinating fish and it's a, a hobby founding fish for a reason, obviously, so. That's right, all right, That's so my number five, my number five uh, is the pygmy cori, Corydoras pygmyae. Um, so this is a very personable and inquisitive, it's, it's an adorable fish. Um, one of the things that's cool with them, most Corydoras are added sort of as a, an extra, as an afterthought, as part of the cleanup crew. Uh, but pygmy quarries, because they spend more time up in the water column, uh, they'll rest on surfaces, you know, on wood and rocks and plants as opposed to just staying on the bottom. So they can really function as a centerpiece, as the showpiece of your aquarium instead of just being, you know, the extra fish that you put in to clean up leftover food. Um, they're small, they're peaceful, they're not really that colorful, but their behaviors are, are so adorable that if you put a group of them, about six or more, uh, in a smaller aquarium, you'll just fall in love with them right away. So my number four pick is the Hyphesobrycon Amande or the Ember Tetra. Now, this fish is, uh, this tetra is actually so small, uh, you know, you could call it a nano tetra. It's, it's, it's really pretty small, which is great, of course, for smaller tanks because you can put a bigger school of them in a relatively limit, limited body of water. So the tendency to form tight schools becomes a little bit more enhanced when you have a greater number of fish. It just looks better. It's really a fabulous fish for this type of uh, setup. Love the color on this fish. It's kind of a uh, deep orange reddish kind of overall you and don't forget to include the right water conditions with it Meaning you want to have an acidic range somewhere between 6 6.5 softer 2 to 3 dkh Those fish are going to glow great little tetra well, That's interesting Tom that that's your number four pick because my number four pick is also a small tetra uh, In my case, I went with the ruby tetra uh, in my opinion. This is a very underrated small tetra they're absolutely gorgeous, they're totally peaceful, they're easy to care for, they're, they're a little bit delicate in terms of water chemistry and parameters, but it's not really that much concern or trouble. Um, one of the things that I really like about these guys is that they look fantastic in black water aquariums and in planted aquariums. So no matter how you set up your tank, the Ruby Tetra will be a good choice for them. Um, this is a fascinating fish to observe. They kind of hang out at the, at the edge of the structure of your aquarium. Uh, just be sure not to keep them with tank mates that are too rowdy because it is a shy species. Uh, they're really good for species only tanks. Coming in at number three is, uh, my pick is the Nanustomus marginatus or the dwarf pencil fish. This is a great little fish for small uh, planted desktop type tanks. Looks equally at home in a natural black water type setup as well. Uh, with its horizontal striping, red fin, uh, red accents on the fins, very peaceful nature. And one of the unique things about this species, like other pencil fish, in fact, is the way they kind of hover. You know, they'll swim, stop. Their pectoral fins are are moving back and very, very quickly, and they kind of hover in one spot. It's a very neat feature. Makes them stand out for sure. Definitely worthy of being on the list. My number three pick is the Betta, Betta splendens. Uh, this is arguably the most common aquarium fish in the world. Uh, in a lot of cases, they're kept in small, unheated bowls where they don't really look great. Uh, but when you keep them in a proper setup, uh, they're a beautiful fish and they're really personable. They'll interact with their owner, they'll come up to the glass and beg for food. 
Um, for desktop aquariums, I usually recommend short fin species, uh, commonly called the placat betta. Uh, they'll have an easier time swimming in the current that's produced in these smaller aquariums. The varieties with longer fins will have a harder time doing so. Uh, it's also important to say that you know, I've, I've singled out betta splendens, but there's all kinds of species of bettas, and a lot of them are also very suitable for desktop aquariums. Uh, you can keep them in groups and they'll breed quite readily. Uh, betta chanoids, betta imbellus, and betta alba marginata are good examples of this. They're also suitable for desktop aquariums. So my number two pick, the white cloud mountain fish. Now this is a very underrated uh, tropical fish in the hobby as a rule. Very common, has been around forever. It's almost a fish a lot of us forgotten about, but there couldn't be a better choice for a desktop aquarium. Of course, other than my number one choice. Now, the, wh the white cloud minnow, uh, as it's sometimes called as well, is a really interesting fish, group, does really well in schools, super peaceful, good for planted tanks, and what's really fantastic about this guy is the fact you don't even need a heater. They, they come from waters that are more temperate. They actually originate in China. Uh, they do well in cooler waters, meaning low 70 degree range. They're actually a great way for a lot of us to get into breeding egg laters. They're an egg scatter. They breed very readily. Uh, and as such, they, uh, they really are a good way to start uh, if you want to get into that part of the hobby. The males are super, super beautiful. They, they have a deep chocolate kind of background to the body with a nice cherry red anal fin, nice red accents on the fin. Really an attractive fish, in fact. Um, yeah, and then of course, one other point that I missed out about their coloration is the fact they have a kind of a nice green sheen on the, to the top of the body as well. So I can't think of uh, a better fish for a desktop tank other than of course, our number one picks. Well, Tom, actually I can think of two species that are better. Uh, my number two species is Scarlet Gembatus, Dario Dario. Uh, this fish really is a candidate for the most beautiful freshwater fish in the world. The females are quite attractive but the males are, are literally living gems. Uh, they're a little bit more challenging to keep. Uh, they're pretty fussy eaters. Oftentimes when you get them from the store, they'll only eat live. You can usually wean them onto frozen and even dry in some cases. Uh, it's a little bit of extra work, but it's, it's totally worth it for how drop dead gorgeous these fish are. Um, they're suitable for the smallest of desktop aquariums, but you want to make sure that their tanks uh, have a lot of structure in them, wood and rock and plants and stuff. That's uh, so that first of all they can feel secure. It's a very shy species, uh, but you also want to limit aggression between them. Think of them kind of as, as tiny little microscopic cichlids. They have some of the same behaviors. You can keep other fish with them, but you have to make sure that they're really, really peaceful. The Scarlet Gembatus is such a shy species. I personally recommend them for species only tanks uh, for that reason. Okay guys, now I know you've been holding on to the edge of your seats. The anticipation has been building, but it's here. Our number one pick. And in my case, it is the Epiplates annulatus, commonly known as the clown killifish. Rocket killifish is another one that it's known by. Now I went all the way to West Africa to get a hold of this little baby. This thing is a gorgeous little fish, uh, complete with bands of black around a, kind of an elongated shaped body. The males have a really nice elongated caudal fin with red and blue in it. It's, it's really an attractive little fish. Uh, does well, you can keep a group of them in an aquarium. There's no problem in doing that. I mean, if, if you really want to have an ideal setup for them, then I would make it a species specific tank where it's only that species in there. Part of the reason I would do that is because they're so easily bred, uh, uh, you know, not cannibalizing their own fry, fry is what I'm trying to get at. So when they spawn, uh, they usually don't touch their babies. It would be older generations that start to become more of a threat. But your population will grow. It's a very interesting feature. As I mentioned, planted tanks are the way to go. They do like softer, more acidic water. Try and provide that for them. Not too crazy, but mildly acidic and somewhat on the softer side. Beautiful little fish. Tom, I was going to pick a killifish for my number one as well. I love them, but I had to go with the honey grammy, Tichuna. Uh, in my opinion, the honey grammy really checks all of the boxes. Um, they're a really attractive fish. They've got nice coloration and a nice shape to their body. Um, they're totally peaceful. You can keep them with basically everything that we've listed today so far. Um, they, don't, they do well in smaller aquariums, so they're suitable for these desktop tanks. Um, they're easy to care for. They're not fussy feeders. They'll eat anything you put in the water. Uh, they're inexpensive. They're 
very commonly available. Uh, and what I, what I like most about them is their behavior. So they have these specialized pectoral fins. I would agree with that 100%. Right. It's very interesting. And so they kind of swim around the tank and they kind of feel things. And, and I just find it totally fascinating to watch. I can watch them for, for days and days. Um, what's also cool about them is they have been commercially bred into a couple of varieties of different colors. So depending on what you're looking for for your desktop aquarium, there's one color that might be more suitable uh, than the other. So that's, that's easily my number one pick. And it's a good one. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, watching, guys. <clears throat> what we're really interested in this video is to know what your top picks are for desktop tanks and, of course, what you think of ours. So don't forget to leave us a comment below. Please also leave us a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe if you're new and hit that bell icon at the bottom uh, to be notified when we upload a new video. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.